Uh, so you, you've done the Mercado, and then uh, then what happens? Well, I continued teaching for a couple of years. It takes me to 1967. Oh, you're always born. And, uh, <laughs> and right after that same group of kids from Club Coatcha mm -hmm. performed the show at the Youth Pavilion at uh -huh. Expo 67 mm -hmm. to incredible acclaim, mm -hmm. I take off to Circle in the Square. Because I ended up at Circle in the Square because two years before, Evelyn Garbery, who was my other great, great mentor in the theater, mm -hmm. along with Jenny, and worked alongside of Jenny, Dr. Evelyn Garbery. Evelyn was from Wales and uh, ended up working in Nova Scotia. And she was the great mentor for so many of my generation in the theater in Nova Scotia. All us guys, Bill Carr, Barry Dunn, all of us came out through Edelin. And she was this mad lady uh, who had, of course, been on stage with Giggle Good and Olivier and Ralph Richardson and da da da. And she just spoke with this really heavy uh, Welsh accent when she wanted to. Uh, mm -hmm. And had uh, been with the Abbey Theatre for many years and uh, she knew her stuff. Mm -hmm. And she called me and asked me to do something with her. And the something was to start the first black theater in Nova Scotia, wow. the Inglewood Community Players. She had a play called Coming Here to Stay. It was about uh, the refugee blacks arriving in Nova Scotia, written by a friend of hers. And she went into a community uh, called Inglewood, which is uh, uh, part of uh, Bridgetown, Nova Scotia. And she got the whole community involved in this play. They were going to, the community was going to be the folks coming. And she needed a couple of folks coming, some actors to come in with her. It was the most sublime happening. Um, we would, uh, Evelyn and I would hop in her old uh, Volkswagen Beetle and head from Halifax down to the valley, you know, two and a half hour, three hour drive. I remember it's in the winter. We're driving out through the winter. She's just hunched over here, laughing and talking. There's a little beetle going, and I'm looking down here because I can see the ground. It is all rotted out here, so I have one foot over here and one foot over here, and I'm watching the snow under here, and she's just barreling down the road. Well, we get down there, and when we would arrive, before we would have uh, rehearsal, the ladies, because it was in the church basement, the ladies would have a huge supper prepared for when we arrived. All this, all this food, and uh, uh, they would come in, and we would do all this, and so after we had this meal, now we're going to start rehearsal. So some of the people who would end up in the play had to be over here, taking care of the cleaning up. The ladies got to clean up this place here, you know, and yell on their lines over here. Da, 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 da. It was glorious. Mm. Now, when this transferred to the stage, I remember the, uh, 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 the adjudicator, it was part of the Dominion Drama Festival at the time. First time that anything like this had ever gone in. Um, Janine Bobien was the adjudicator, and she was just mind blown. She couldn't get over. It was to her. It was like as if these people that she saw on the stage were the actual people who just arrived in Nova Scotia now. Da, 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 you know, and we won a whole bunch of awards. Da 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 da. da. Then the federal government paid for us to bring it up and do it someplace in, in Toronto. We did it one afternoon and then another place in uh, Montreal. Uh, we were just doing this stuff, you know. Um, and uh, 
that was the last thing I did before I hooked off to the States because I went from Expo to New York. Wow. <coughs> Why did you go to New York? Evil said to me. I had auditioned twice for National Theatre School. Mm -hmm. National Seal was just beginning. Mm -hmm. And the second, the first year I was told, you know, uh, we're putting you on a waiting list and, you know, there's always this, the other, the other. Next year, we're putting you on a waiting list. And he was said, lovey, they're not doing Othello anytime recently. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. She said, if I were you, there's only one place I'd go. He said, where's that? She said, circle in the square. I had never heard tell of Circle in the Square. I said, okay. But it was Evelyn saying, I said, okay. She gets the phone directory, because you had their directories at that time, gets a New York Circle in the Square. She says, call them. <laughs> so I dialed a number. She said, ask to speak to the director of the school. And I did. Wow. John Finn was his name. So I get on there, I don't even know what I'm going to say. The eyes are still, I want to come to the circle in the square. Well, he says, can you? Okay, he said, uh, listen, um, let's see, can you make it down here by 2.30? It's like uh, 10 o'clock now. And I said, not exactly. <laughs> he said, well, I said, because I'm, I'm in Halifax, Nova Scotia. He said, where's that? So I tell him, and he said, uh, oh, he said, well, no, you can't make it down here. But, the, but he said, so how about next week? <laughs> I said, okay. And, uh, you know, I want you to prepare this and prepare that, and you know, sometimes Shakespeare, something like that. Okay. So there I am, winging my way down to New York. Mm. And uh, I get down there and I do this audition and they say, yeah, and um, here's a scholarship. <laughs> da, 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 da.